Hi everyone, so we're going to continue now with uh, our examples of using the valence bond model to represent bonding in various molecules. And the molecule I want to continue with here is CO2. And this would be an example of representing bonding of a molecule that contains both sigma and pi bond with the valence bond model. One thing that's unique about CO2 is that both the carbon and the oxygen atom use hybrid orbital. So I'm going to write that down right here. So what we would need to do is figure out what hybrid orbitals e each of the uh, atoms uses and then afterwards we're going to draw them. Okay. So as with all the other valence bond type of representation, the first thing we're going to do is actually start with the lowest structure for CO2 and if you do your lowest structure drawing of CO2, you'll find that it has the following structure. That will be the best structure you can draw for CO2. And if you do that, you can figure out what kind of electron geometry each atom has, right? And that tells you the hybrid orbital that you're supposed to use. So for oxygen, you have one, two, three pairs of electron. So in other words, that would tell you that it's a trigonal planar electron geometry and this oxygen has the same number of pairs of electrons as well so as a result they're both trigonal planar and if you look at the carbon of course it has two pairs of electrons around it so that must be a linear carbon okay with these certain electron geometry we also have an associated hybrid orbital to go along with it in this case both carbon and oxygen use hybrid orbitals so if you have a trigonal planar structure then uh, or electron geometry then your hybrid orbital will be sp2 so all both oxygens are going to use sp2 and then for the linear carbon then you're going to have an sp hybrid orbital okay now what you have to do to complete this question is of course you have to draw the bonding in terms of orbitals and then you have to show how many pi and how many sigma bonds you have, okay? All right, so let's just do the drawing first. Carbon in this case is linear, so I'm just going to draw right around here. Let's say I have a, that as carbon. That's an sp orbital. Remember, it's linear and it's 180 degrees. And then each of the oxygen is trigonal planar, so I'm going to draw one, two, three, and then the same one here, one, two, and three, okay? Now, they are 120 degrees from each other, trigonal planar and sp2 orbitals, okay? Right now you have two bonds, and those two bonds are sp2, sp overlap, okay? sp2 coming from the oxygen, sp coming from the carbon. But it's clear in your actual drawing, you actually have four bonds, right? You have a double bond and you have another double bond. So you have four bonds, but right now you've drawn only two bonds. So where are the double bonds? That's something we need to fill in in a second. But before we do that, let's just complete the drawing first with the lone pairs on the oxygen. So I'm going to put a couple of dots right here for each of the oxygen. And then what I'll do is then discuss how to draw the double bond. Okay, the second bond in the in the carbon-oxygen bond. Okay, so here's a slide from your Chapter 9 lecture slide. What I want to show you right here is the sp orbital. Okay, you remember that the way we discuss the concept of formation of hybrid orbital from regular orbitals is we say that we first promote the electron from a lower energy orbital so that we can get the same number of orbitals that have single electrons as the number of bonds that we want. And remember for sp, we initially started with two electrons in the s and then we take one of those electrons, move it to the p, and then we hybridize those two orbitals to form the two sp hybrid orbitals. Or of course, if you have S and P, if you hybridize these two and you get your two sp orbital, what's left is that you still have a couple of these orbitals, p orbitals, that are not used in the hybridization, okay? So these remain unused, and if you remember about our discussion about pi bonds in um, the structure of nitrogen, okay, in the lecture, those are really the orbitals that are being used to make the pi bonds, which is the side-to-side -side overlap okay of the p orbitals in this case and that's what generates high bonds so if you look at the sp orbital you still have those two mtp orbitals as shown in this picture right here okay so there's one p orbital right here i'm going to draw it outline it to make it clear okay so that's one and then the second one is the one in the back which is a little hard to see but that would be perpendicular to the other two uh, orbitals okay so in other words the carbon 
actually has two more orbitals that I'm not drawing. This carbon right here in the center. That's one orbital, one p orbital. Okay, and then there's another one which is perpendicular to that one. So I'm going to give it a different color, say purple. Okay, so that's what the carbon has. Okay, it it's uses sp orbital, so that means that it still has two p orbitals that's empty. If you look back to your slide for sp2 orbital, okay, which is the one used by oxygen in this case, the sp2 orbital also, it uses only two of the p orbital, right? So with, by using the same reasoning, right, if I have s and then I have, I have these three, right, and I make three sp2 orbital, that means that I still have one p orbital that's left, okay? So if I have one p orbital that's left, that again could be used for pi bonding. So in other words, each one of these oxygen atoms right here actually has an empty p orbital, but now it's no longer empty because it's going to be used for bonding. So I can draw one right here for that oxygen with the purple color. And let me draw the one with the red color right here, okay? This is how you can draw the second bond in the double bond, okay? So you have the second bond. You already did the sigma bond, right, which is the sp2, sp overlap. Now you're going to add your two other bonds. One bond is going to be this between the one of the p orbitals of the carbon with the p orbital of the oxygen. And the other one is going to be that purple one, which is this overlap right here, okay? What you have then is two sigma, which is a result of the sp2, sp overlap. And then you have two pi bonds result of the 2p, 2p overlap from the oxygen and the carbon. Okay, so that completes your drawing. Now, this is really something important to understand. Anytime you have an sp orbital, you're always going to have two p orbitals that are not used during hybridization, and those p orbitals might be used to form um, bonding, okay, to form bonds, uh, pi bonds in this case. Okay, so what about resonance structures? How would you represent bonding in, in molecules that have resonance structures? There really isn't anything special about resonance structures. Remember that what you have is you just have multiple Lewis structures that you can draw. So if you want to use the valence bond model to represent resonance structures, you just have to pick one of the resonance structures and then draw it as the valence bond representation. So for example, for ozone, we have two resonance structure A and B here, okay? In one of them, you have single bond between oxygen 1 and 2, and then another one you have a double bond between oxygen 1 and 2, okay? So uh, if you want to draw a valence bond representation, you just have to go through the same steps that you've done. In other words, you have to go around and calculate the uh, number of pairs of electrons around each atom, figure out electron geometry, and then afterwards then draw the valence bond, the orbital representation, and then answer a question about sigma and pi bonds, okay? So in this particular case, for let, let's do it for the A structure first. You're going to see that this oxygen has four pairs, right? So if you have four pairs, that would mean that you, you're going to have a tetrahedral geometry. And then the middle oxygen, you have one, two, three, okay? That means that it's going to be a trigonal planar. And then if you look actually at the last oxygen, it's the same thing. It's also three, so that's also going to be trigonal planar. Now, if it's tetrahedral, it's going to be sp3. The trigonal planar is going to be sp2. Now remember, sp2 has one of those p orbitals that wasn't used, and that's what you're going to use to make your pi bond, because if you look at the structure, it has two sigma bond, and then you have one pi bond, right? So you have to show that in your drawing. Let's continue the drawing. Let's do the tetrahedral oxygen. So I'm going to have one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to do the sp2 oxygens. I have two of them, so I'm going to draw. Let's do one of them first. Here, I'm just going to use a different color, although they're all oxygen. I'm going to use one color, that will be one. And then the other one would be right here. Okay. And you just have to try to draw 120 degrees, you know, as best as you can here. Okay. So right now what you have is your sigma bond. So to complete the drawing, you just have to put your lone pairs. And then, of course, uh, one thing that's missing right now is the pi bond, because you have, you've drawn your two sigma bonds, which is the two overlaps here. But then you have the pi bond. Now, remember that the pi bond is represented by a PP overlap, so here you have one, two, okay? Remember, because it's sp2, you still have one P orbital that's not used in hybridization. So that's where that pi bond is going to come from, okay? So that completes your picture for ozone. You don't need to draw the 
uh, average structure, in other words, because it's just a little too complicated, and the valence bond model doesn't well represent resonance, okay? When we talk about molecular orbital, you see that molecular orbital works much better in representing bonding in resonance structures, okay? All right, so that would close up the examples for valence bond. And if you have any more questions, I would encourage you to do more uh, in the lecture slides. There are questions about drawing bonds, or there are pictures that show you how to draw um, valence bond orbitals for the following molecules, C2H6, C2H4, and C2H2. So I would go ahead and for you to try out and draw these small kills and if you want to see whether you're correct or not you can draw them take a picture of them and post them in Facebook so I can take a look at them and make sure that they're the correct drawing okay